Does Barry join us in this part of the show or? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Just checking. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I was like, hello. Can't have Chris without Barry. <laughs> Is Barry here? Um. Uh. So, Jennifer, do you have a question for Barry? Maybe uh, about in, in terms of something he might need. Do you have a question for Barry? <laughs> I just want to know if Barry's 2019 is getting started on the right on the right foot. You're going to need a couple of horses <laughs> or a couple of mules. You know, that's that's good. Good advice. <laughs> I'm going to keep that in mind as I continue to make my goals for 2019. Thank you for the tip. I was gonna, I was going to say is that like life advice from Barry? All right, well we got to do this. So. Ready? <laughs> ah! I just cut off my guests with the intro music. That was awesome. You did, but that's Sorry. okay. Sorry, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome everyone to the podcast engineering show. You somehow butt dialed this podcast and ended up here, but I'm, <laughs> we're happy you're here. So my name's Chris Curran. I produce podcasts for individuals and, and medium and big companies and and podcast production is pretty much my life. Well, and Podcast Engineering School, which is the school where I teach uh, producers and editors, you know, the really hardcore audio knowledge, the audio production knowledge that they need. So uh, this show, it, this is, we're entering the second year of the show, which is really, I'm totally, wait, second year? Or third year? Third year. I'm on crack. It's all Jennifer Longworth's uh it's all because of her. <laughs> so so you're celebrating your two-year anniversary. You're moving into your third year. No. Okay. So you celebrated your one-year anniversary moving into your second year. No. 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 I'm cel- even- This is uh, about three years ago is when I started it. So you're into your fourth year. Almost. <laughs> okay. Everyone's like, listening. They're like, what the, We're like, what? What the? <laughs> Wait, hold on. What the gotcha. f- am I listening to? <laughs> right? <That's laughs> totally. All right. Well, look, I just have one thing. To, this is how I like to end my intro, but I want to say one thing to you, the listener. All right. Ready? Get close to the, get cl- you know, get close to the speaker or push your earbuds in just a little more. All right. Ready? I believe that you can produce really great sounding audio. Yes, I do. I really do. All right. And of course, Barry's with me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's here. Excellent. And Jennifer Longworth is here. Finally. I mean, Woo-hoo! how many events have I seen you at? I'm like, Jennifer, you got to come on the show. When you, and you're like, I know, I will. <laughs> I will. And then uh, eventually, hey, it's the new year. Are you going to come on the show or what? Right, right, right. Yes, I will. Yeah, I, <laughs> I pinged you after. It, you know, that was a gentle nudge, though, right? Yeah. It was one of those things I hadn't forgotten about you. I just hadn't done it yet. Right. So. Yeah, that's all. And and you could have easily said, oh, give me a few more weeks or whatever. And whatever. It's fine. But so you are a podcast editor and producer. Yes. Yes. You're a, you're an executive producer of awesomeness. That's what it says on LinkedIn. That- I don't know. What is it? What is that? That's right. That's correct. I'm an executive producer of Awesomeness. That title actually came from a lady I was working with her on her show, and she wanted to put me on her website. And I was like, okay. She goes, what's your title? I'm like, editor, producer. She goes, oh, that's so lame. Come up with something better. I was like, uh, executive producer of Awesomeness? She's like, great. I'm using it. So uh, thanks to Mary Graham, and I kind of ran with it, kind of took that one. Okay. And so it's on my business card, too, and I had business cards done in haste at Staples before podcast movement because I forgot to order them ahead of time and executive produced them as awesome as on and I picked them up the people like that's so great (laughs) because they looked at them while they were printing it like that's the best title ever so yeah that's what's on LinkedIn that's what's on everything cool so you're editing a lot of podcasts you also spoke at the podcast movement which is awesome and so I'm psyched to talk to you about what you're doing how you're producing episodes um, so, you know, we start with the speed round. So we want to know, just start with your microphone. And, wait, 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 are you actually on any shows? Are you hosting or co-hosting any podcasts? Yeah, I host The Thoughtful Entrepreneur for okay. upmyinfluence.com. 
what what I shouldn't type when I'm when I'm recording an episode. <laughs> what the dead air doesn't help things. What? Oh, I was sorry. like, hmm, <laughs> and do I need to keep talking or yeah? I might, I'm host I, of the Thoughtful Entrepreneur. I might cut that out, but actually, I'm not going to because you know you got to keep people on their toes. All right, the Thoughtful Entrepreneur. So this is good. So when you're going, when you're getting ready to do an episode of the the Thoughtful Entrepreneur. Okay, you're going to sit down, you're going to hook up all your equipment, so you're going to be speaking into a mic. So tell us the microphone, tell us what the mic is plugged into, your interface, your computer, what software you're using, and then even real quick, just like your your workflow when you're editing, all the way to when okay. you make the final MP3 and tag it and stuff. So go over it quick, and then we'll pick through it for the rest of the episode. All right, well, my mic is an ATR 2100, and it plugs through USB into my computer. I'm not fancy enough for an interface. It's just me, so I don't feel like I need it, but whatever. I used a Zoom for a while. I didn't like the way it worked out. Uh, I'm into a HP desktop with 16 megabytes of RAM because my laptop couldn't k- keep up. And I record with the Thoughtful Entrepreneur. I have guests and we use Squadcast. So we're each on Squadcast through Google Chrome. So that's what I use for the recording. And then I put them into Adobe Audition and format them properly and use RX7 to really clean it up. I edit myself. I add the intros, outros, all the pretty pieces together, you know, basic editor stuff. And then level it out, match volume, blah, 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 blah. And then poof, it's in Libsyn and available to the whole world. Nice. All right. And uh, wait, one quick question for Barry about Squadcast. Barry, have you heard of uh, Squadcast? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I thought so. I mean, do, do you do you use it, uh, Barry? No way. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> All well, right. That's too bad. He's kidding. Yeah, Squadcast is <laughs> Squadcast has really come a long way, huh? Yes, yes. And new features each time I open it up because they're continually working on it. And I think they're, you know, they're listening to their customers going, oh, that would help you. Let's fix it. Hey, let's integrate this. Let's integrate that and right. make this work better for everyone. It's my my guests who can't follow directions who have problems with Squadcast. Everyone else is fine. Yeah. But. Yeah. Well, that's our that's our life. That's our lives. I said I was going to say <laughs> life and lives. And I, what did I even say? I don't even know what came out of my mouth. You kind of said both. <laughs> So, so, you know, whatever. That's the life of a podcast producer slash editor. It's like you got to deal with people who don't know much at all. And, it, you know, nothing against them, but they don't know much. And so, <laughs> you know, we have to work with them and massage them and pound them into submission, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've... On some of these people, well, why can't you get on? Well, this and this and that. And I'm like, fine. We'll go over to Zencaster. Like, I can't get on that either. I'm like, fine. We'll go over to Zoom. I can't do that. Fine. Uber conference or we're not doing this because <laughs> Skype hates me. <laughs> Skype doesn't always work on my computer. I don't know why. So that's oh. not even an option because I was a guest on someone else's show once and we had to use my Squadcast account because my Skype would not connect to them. And that was slightly ridiculous. I'm like, well. Let me introduce you to my friend Squadcast, uh, <laughs> even though I'm your guest and I'm going to host this show. You know, I think but it Barry. Worked. It sounded great, but still, I think Barry once told me he was at your place. He was actually helping you host the show, and he tried to use Skype on your computer. Barry, when you tried to use Skype on Jennifer's computer, uh, how did it go? It's a mess. <laughs> True story. It's a mess. <laughs> see, see how I work in the clips. Do do people appreciate yeah, yeah. that? I don't know. Yeah. I would say, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. But Wait, I, don't I don't have quite the low sound frequency. Like... 190%. <laughs> there you go. All right. That's close <laughs> enough. So we're going to, I'm psyched to talk to you about editing uh, and cleaning up because I know that's what you, you know, again, that's most of what we do is like editing and cleaning up uh, the things that should mm-hmm. have been done better the first time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, (laughs) microphones that should have been better microphones. Um, People saying, um, 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 because they should have been a better speaker. And people taking out air conditioner noises because people should be in a quiet room. So, My favorite was the guy I interviewed from The Grill Beast, Dave Johnson. And he's a grill guy. And he clicked his grilling tongs a lot. And I was finally like, dude, 
put those away, put them in a drawer, put them in another room. But he was talking about them. So he was click, 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 click. You can't really? do that. Really? Mm-hmm. It's kind of a cool sound clip, like, to do it, like, once maybe, right? Yeah, but it it was more of a nervous tick type thing. Right? What, what was but, he... it, you know, in the editing thing, it's obvious when it is. So it's easy to take out because you can see it in the waveforms, you know. But still, really put the tongs away. Does RX-7 have a detong? Uh... <laughs> Not specifically. Should we email them? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, we have an idea. <laughs> Forget about mouth clicks. So let's do tongue clicks. Yes. Yeah. All I don't right, know so what you... the market for that would be. It doesn't happen that <laughs> often, you know? Right. So you got the ATR2100, of course. Really good mic. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, like you said, if if you're not having other people in person, I mean, there's then yeah, just a USB mic right into your computer, right? You don't need an interface with, yep. with more than one input, right? Nope. I don't think so. Yeah. And, you know, and if you ever happen to be on location or if someone else is coming there, then then you figure out something else. But the ATR is great in that way too, because you could bring it places and do it's just it's just handy, right? Yeah, and I like that it's has the XLR option in addition to USB. It just makes it a little more versatile. Yeah. And, and I it- have the Zoom H four as well. So if ever I needed to plug someone else in, I, I do have that. I just never need it. Right. And I think with the, I, I may be wrong, it's been so long, but I think the ATR2100, when you connect the XLR output and the USB output simultaneously, I think they both work. I have not tried that. Yeah, they both work. And some people, I think some people hmm. use that for like, like, like you, you're doing, they'll plug the USB into the computer so they can obviously talk through the computer to someone. And yet they also run the XLR out maybe into like a local recorder. So you could actually technically huh. do a double ender. You could just run the ATR into your H4 and that's it. Interesting. I might have to try that out. Yeah. I mean, you Play never know. It. Like Later you know, in the hole. It's just, if. There, there's times in, in a producer's life where like you just got to solve a problem and you're like, what What the How the mm-hmm. heck am I going to hook this up? So sometimes that can help. Right. I'm going right. to cough. Okay. I muted myself and I muted myself. You know how I've been muting myself lately on the mix pre six. Cause I got rid of my Ooh. cough button, my, uh, my rolls cough button. Actually, I use that on my meditation stream. So it's hooked up to a different, you know, a different audio, different audio connection, different mic, different cables. So now when I need to mute myself, when I'm, you know, hosting this show, I just easily, uh, on, on the zoom on the, sorry, on the mix pre six, I have my, you know, there's a mute button. You could just hit it. And and the good thing about that mute button is it's an actual mute button. So, like, zero audio comes through. Whereas with the Rolls cough button, it doesn't actually mute it. It only decreases the level by, like, I don't even know, like 40, 40 or 45 dB, which is kind of a lot. But you'd be surprised if you, yeah. if you cough really loud, you could still hear it. Yeah. Which huh. is... I'd rather have a, like, mute button <laughs> like when I was in radio and yeah hit the button and it, nothing right. came through when you're hosting your show do you ever mute yourself and and if so how no because I am happy to edit myself got it so I, I don't usually need to just based on the show format it's me and a guest and I tell them up front hey this will be edited so if you need to start over go ahead if you don't like what you just said to that. Okay, okay, take that out. And and I tell them, I'm probably going to do the same thing at some point. But I've also trained myself to be quiet and get all of the coughs and stuff out of the, <laughs> all the way before we start. Right. But No, that's really good. And that's funny. That's I tell my, usually I tell my guests that. I didn't have to tell you because you already know this isn't live and that you can do a, have a do-over if you need it. Uh but several of my clients do that. Like right before they're about to do an interview, they'll say, "Hey, this isn't live, so if you have to do a do-over, just stop and have at least you know have a nice pause, and maybe even start your answer over. Or if you're not going to start your whole answer over, at least step back, like like go back, like maybe a sentence or two, and start from there. 
Yeah, because the helpful. worst the worst thing someone can do is they're talking and they mess up and they're like, "Oh, I messed up," ha ha, and then they just like. As they're laughing, they're like, uh huh, and then they just continue talking in the in the laughing tone, right. uh-huh. and then they just continue, <laughs> and then wait, hold, ah, uh, uh, sorry, that is so that is so awkward to edit when people do that, right? Because it's like because then the no edit sounds like this, it. the edit sounds like this. Uh, hello, I'm just talking, and this is the edit, and then oh, all of a sudden, no, oh, I'm just I just was continuing to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not a fan of those because <laughs> they just they just frustrate me. Then I'm going. Does the rest of the sentence really matter? Because it sounds really <laughs> awkward. So then I have to make an editorial decision on how important was this whole segment anyway? Did it contribute to the overall value of the segment or not? Because if the answer is not, and it sounds so goofy, I'll cut it. So I, awesome. My philosophy is to remove distractions, and that's a distraction to me. And right. it's not like a listener won't notice. Sometimes it's pretty extreme, and it'll just go because it's ridiculous. I love that. Does the rest of the sentence even matter? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but <laughs> you've probably heard things. That's why you laugh. You laugh because it's true, right? Yeah, of course. Good. No, by that point, it just just start over. Either start over, forget it. Where else can we pick up? Can we go back? This is... Hmm. And sometimes it's just stuck. And it does matter. <sighs> those are those are tricky. Right. And so when you do cut... Like, when someone does make a major flub and they continue the sentence, and then you decide that... Uh, yeah, you know, the rest of the sentence, eh, not really necessary. I'm going to cut it. So the first mm-hmm. half of the sentence, let's say... Did, like at the very end of it, since it is, you're pretty much going to end the guest mid sentence. Do you ever have to do any like fading right at the very end? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be a little fade. Just a- how how little? Uh depends on the word, you know. And I've gone and found words that they've said previously. It's the same word, so they end with that. <laughs> but they would be like that. Da, 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 da. Well, let me go see where they said that another spot and cut it in this copy and paste Got it. so that it sounds natural like a natural end but you know just it, it depends on how long of a word you know people and well if they gave me that much and to work with it's going to be a different level of fade than if they say and you know right and one good thing, Jennifer, if they ever end the sentence or mid sentence with the word um, there's plenty of other ums that you can find in, in the recording. <laughs> <laughs> if you need to swap um, out an um. <laughs> yeah, I don't know <laughs> if I would ever feel the need to swap out an um. <laughs> I don't know, maybe somewhere along the line, but. Right. Doubtful. <laughs> all right. So you got a Windows machine. Is it relatively yep. new and is it fast enough and all that? I bought it refurbished last year and it's a powerhouse. It's a workstation computer. So it's built to be more robust than what you would typically just buy, go buy as a PC for your office or whatever. Right. And the RAM was one of the most important things because my poor little laptop, it just got so bogged down once I started upgrading software and trying to add plugins and the creative cloud and all this stuff. And it's like, I can't keep up anymore. Mm. And finally threw my hands up. I can't deal with this. So the 16 Ram is my favorite part (laughs) of this machine because it it can really keep up. Yeah, and it's good, obviously, for editing audio because it needs to keep all the audio in the RAM and, and, and not only one copy of it, probably like several copies and pieces and all that stuff, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It can't get my poor laptop. Bless its heart. But I bought this at a local establishment and I was like, I want it because I was looking at the specs on everything they had, right? And they're like, oh, man, what well, the dudes who works here, he had his eye on that. Ha, ha, ha. I'm going to tell him somebody got it. He doesn't get it. You know, so they were kind of laughing at the expense of their friend because I'm buying this <laughs> machine. So I don't know what the friend was intending to do with it, but I'm glad it's mine. Cool. And I've had no problems with it at all. It's it's a beautiful thing. 
I just totally muted myself and coughed my head off. And now my throat is weird. Like, you know, when you cough too much and then it's just your throat's weird. Yeah. Like it, it's not yeah. necessarily that you have to cough, but like you keep swallowing and it's like something's wrong. Yeah. That's no fun. Especially when you're like trying to do an interview and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, so let's talk about Squadcast. When you're setting up for a Squadcast session. What are you really careful about and what do you tell the guests to be careful about? Well, most recently at the Squadcast interview I did earlier this week or maybe last week, it was not recognizing his microphone correctly. Mm. And the worst show, the worst episode of the Thoughtful Entrepreneur out there is when the system was pulling from her webcam instead of our actual microphone because uh, she didn't have the settings right and we couldn't figure out what was wrong until far into it and that people were like wow that episode was sounded awful I'm like i know i hardly wanted to release it right but i did anyway but it was crap so always making sure that you have the right audio inputs and outputs correct otherwise you know, I'm using my ATR2100 right now, but if for some reason it defaulted to webcam, it, no, it would not, yeah. even, I just, not even be the same thing. I listened to this show called Coffee House Blunders. It's with Danny Wrench from Chess.com and his buddy. And the le- two episodes ago, he, they were, re- and, you know, I heard his voice sounded really weird. And in the mm-hmm. beginning of that episode, he's like, oh, we're in a new studio here at Chess.com and I'm using the Blue Yeti and okay, fine. But, it didn't sound like a Blue Yeti. And I was like, he's got the wrong mic chosen, right? But mm-hmm. they didn't know it. And they obviously, you know, this is after the podcast has been released. So it's not like I can tell them like, hey, dude, switch mics. So this today, <laughs> earlier today, I listened to their very next episode. And they actually he actually said that in the previous episode, he was using a Blue Yeti, but it was a, a second Blue Yeti, which was like 15 feet away or something. <laughs> Oh, no. Yeah, because in the studio, oh. apparently they got a bunch of oh, mics dear. in the studio. So <laughs> on the screen, it said Blue Yeti. And he's like, okay, great. But oh. it was the wrong Blue Yeti. <laughs> That's oh, things. boy. Oh, yeah. Those things are, you know, they have their own learning curve anyway. But it's really not helpful if it's the one across the room. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Boy. Right? So, and and then how do you... Do you get when when you get a guest on there and you're about to conduct an interview? Do you like what kind of coaching do you give the guest in terms of you know just sounding good or avoiding things that sound bad? Well, I I give them basically out of the show. Here's what to expect. Here's what's going to happen prior to the interview. I have emailed them. Hey, okay, we're on for this day. Here's your link. Please have earbuds and a microphone if possible. Sometimes they. Don't even read that part. As I mentioned before, some people just don't follow the directions. But hopefully they'll do that. And and if if I hear myself bouncing back or, you know, just talking for a little bit to make sure we're okay. And if something really sounds off, then we start doing it. Well, is your the correct mic chosen? Do you have anything else? Can you go to a different, can you close the door? Because on Squadcast, you can see the person as well because there's the video component. And... So I see him sitting in this like naked room <laughs> for a long time. Right, like, right, right. Bouncy, 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 and the door is wide open. There are people in the hallway. It's like, okay, I can totally see you. This is not ideal, but we'll see what happens. At least put in earbuds. Okay, thanks. <laughs> right. And shut the door. But then, Thank you. And shut the door. And come on. You, this is, <laughs> and some of these people have been guests on multiple shows. Like, you should know how this works by now. Okay, maybe not. Whatever. But then once we're on, once we, you know, everything sounds okay, it's like, okay, here's the show. I'm going to record my intros and outros later because the first one or two I did, I tried to live introduce the person and read their bio, and it was such a train wreck. It's like, you know what? I'm not doing that again. So I just start, welcome to the show, once they're on. Okay. I don't say, hey, how are you, to get into a goodness knows where rabbit trail of conversation. It's just, welcome to the show. And... Here's what we're going to do. We're going to have a conversation, get your story. Previously, I've sent, they've sent me questions they would like me to ask or suggested questions. And my background is in radio. I was on the air at a local station here in Lexington, Kentucky. And I learned from the main host, I was, I was learned as a co-host, 
people would send him questions and he would look at them and use them as a guide, but not stick to them. Right. And it drove me nuts as, you know, a newbie trying to learn. I'm like, but they sent you these questions. He's like, eh, you know, <laughs> doing it this way or that way is better. So I look at their questions. I read their bio, get a basic idea of who they are and where we should go. So I might start with one of their questions. And then if I get stuck, I'll go back to the questions. And and I tell them, like, hey, you sent me questions. We may or may not stick with those. We'll just see where it goes. It's pretty organic. And after we've talked for 15, 20 minutes, I'm going to ask you the question, what advice do you have for the thoughtful entrepreneur who is listening? At that point, you say whatever comes to your mind. You don't, you know, we've been talking to 20 minutes. Something might strike you that you hadn't thought about previously. And then after that, you have time to do your promos, your where you find me, blah, blah, blah stuff. So that's the coaching I give them is more of what to expect through the interview and kind of put them at ease talking so they're not nervous and whatever. Right. And then, of course, tell them, hey, this is edited. Don't freak out. You ever have to uh, walk them through adjusting their level or anything like that? Not usually. Yeah, sometimes I have to do that. It's actually kind of rare, but not that rare. Like people will connect and they're the level will be low enough where it raises a red flag for me. And I'm like, oh boy, you know, because if you record with a level that's too low, then when you boost it up later, you're going to boost all the room noise and everything too. And it's, and, and it's, it's just not the highest resolution. So at times I have to walk people through to, if they're on a windows machine, you know, go to their control panel and sound uh, mm -hmm. on a Mac. Mm -hmm. It's easier because it's, it's just easier to find those things. Oh, it is difficult on a PC. I will not deny it. I can't even find it sometimes. Like, where is it where I adjust my mic settings? I don't remember. Apparently, I sound fine to you because you didn't tell me to adjust my levels when I came on. So, I yeah, your okay. level it is in generally slightly low, but not not too low. So, okay, that's I, you know, if I don't have to go that route of of walking these walking the guests through, I won't. If I don't have to, oh, it's only if I have to. If I look at the level and I'm like, oh god, this is not good. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. So Squadcast. All right. You're using Squadcast and now they're doing the uploads in the background as the recording's mm -hmm. taking place, right? Yes. That was awesome. Okay. So you don't have to sit there and wait. Hey, nobody hang up because we're going to make sure this uploads. Right. It, it's just, it was done. It was so weird. I'm like, oh, it's finished. It's already there. That's really weird. But very so cool. And yeah, cool. And so what um what resolution are they recording at now? Is it still wave or is it now the MP3? Oh, wave. It is wave. Wave. Yeah. Okay. Better be. <laughs> they better keep it at wave. Yeah, they always <laughs> kept it wave. In fact, when they first started, first like I don't know, maybe a year and a half ago, at least a year and a half ago, they were recording a wave file 24 bit and was it 96k or 48k? It huh. was something so big that like I literally did a session and that those are back in the days when you you had to wait till the end for everything to upload. So then you would we literally sat there in one session, I'm not joking, for 40 minutes waiting for these files to upload. Holy cow. Yeah. And I was like I had I to tell I think it's 441 now. Yeah, and it's also probably 16 bit. So that yeah. saves a lot. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, that was interesting. It's I'm happy for those guys. It's good to see them grow. Um and now the latest thing with Squadcast is they don't, it doesn't do the ducking thing anymore. They don't have the auto, the, 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 mm -hmm. the, uh, what, what, what would you say? Um, the anti feedback yeah. ducking thing, whatever. Yeah. Cause that was annoying. Yeah. That's always annoying. At least these guys are responsive and the user's like, hey, this is annoying. They go, we got you. Right. And they get on it. Yeah. Which is pretty impressive. And they're very active on social media and engaged in the different forums. And, and they were at Podcast Movement and PodFest. I sat next to one of their guys at PodFest last year, the strategic networking thingy. And they're really open. It's pretty cool because some software companies and developers, they just do their own thing. And they you know kind of care what the consumer thinks, but right. eh, whatever. Squadcast seems to really... Be like, hey guys, what what else do you want? Because they're still new, they're excited. They have a, a product that's actually working and just getting better. And they figured out the auto drift thing and yeah, a lot of the other problems that happen with a lot of remote 
recording systems. So. Right. And plus, I'm impressed. I like it. And plus, they're young guys, so they're not like completely jaded by by the cruelty of life <laughs> yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe that's the big difference there. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So, oh, the the I just wanted to mention the worst thing about the ducking thing is that it's and it, a Skype Skype does it. Skype is the classic ducking, you know system right so when one person will be talking and they'll just be talking and let's say it's the guest the, the guest is talking answering a question okay good lovely and the host this is the worst thing a host can do on skype is say mm-hmm yep. uh-huh okay uh-huh because every time <laughs> this is gonna mess it up every oh, time it's yeah terrible <laughs> well oh. that, one of the things about squad has having the video is then I can nod and they can see me so I don't have to verbally say, uh-huh, yeah. because they can see that I'm responding. You know, there, there's something you want to give affirmation to the person you're talking to. And the only way to do that on Skype or phone call or something that's not visual is, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. And then you get all the crazy ducking and really a pain. Because there's not much you can do about it. And you, you just hope that that word wasn't important. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, but I, thing is, I don't think it's necessary for hosts to do that. Say, mm-hmm, uh-huh, mm-hmm. Like, I know in a normal conversation you might, but like as a mm -hmm. host of a show, I really think it's good technique to learn to not do that and just... While right. the guest is talking, you just listen. I mean, unless it's something like, unless they say something amazing and you're like, oh, wow, really? That's different. Like, if it's if it's genuine, but if it's just the normal, uh-huh, mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm. Like, it, that's a habit that I think a host should learn to not do. Yeah. That's my opinion, I guess. Well, I love it when people, my clients, have recorded in separate tracks as... I hope they would, but they don't all do that. And I can just delete that stuff out. Yeah. And it's okay. The people who send me everything on one track, that's frustrating. But when I was on radio and listened to myself again, my response was, wow. I said it all the time. Okay. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. And that, <laughs> then I go back and listen to myself going, holy moly. So I don't do that now. I'm a... A frequent user of the word so at the beginning of my sentences and I really wish I'd quit that but I haven't I know a way every time you say start a sentence with so just slap yourself in the face <laughs> you know that might work that's like okay or at least a rubber band flick on my wrist to start because I am on squadcast and they can see me and the guest might be slightly thrown off if they see me slap on myself in the face at the or, beginning of every single sentence. Or, well, every time I talk, it's like a transition, but you know, it's uh Jennifer. Darn it. So what do you Jennifer, think? Jennifer, 20 push-ups every time. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe I should just keep tally marks when I'm editing. Well, I can do this in post when I go back and, and hear myself do it. No, I want I'm you to do it live when you're recording. If you catch live. yourself, you say, all right, hold on. I got to take my headphones off. I got to drop and do 20 push-ups right now. <laughs> Come wow. On. Uh, yeah. Hmm. I'll, no? uh, all right. I'll make a note of that. <laughs> all right. So let's get to Adobe Audition. Um, uh, we all know it's a great program. It might be, for podcasting, it might be the best program with the most features and and, and you can do everything in one place. Uh, so mm -hmm. you're using Audition. So take us through real quick, like you bring the files in, like let's say it's a multi-track. Let's say you have a client who gives you three tracks, a host and two guests. Real, real quick, just tell us how you assemble it in Audition and, and go over that workflow. Well, typically I'll run everything through a, a chain in RX before putting it in Audition. And that is because if I start listening to it and I hear all the common problems, the clicking, the plosives, everything, right, it just drives me insane. So I just put it through the plosives, the clip, EQs, the click, the mouth click before I even start on it. And those all go through, save them as wave and then put them in audition in the multi-track and I 
a lot for a long time I just was editing and waveform, which is destructive and everyone's like, Oh, don't do that. I'm like, I don't get it. I don't know why not. And then I learned how to actually use multi track. Game changer. Oh. Love it. Because when people come back and go, Hey, can you change this? Sure, no problem. Whereas before I have to start all over. Right. So I learned a few things along the way. Oh, right. Yes. I guess the clients who send back, you know, re-edits a lot, because I had a couple, when we were first starting out about a year ago, I had a new client and it took us a while to really find the groove and like, oh, can you tweak this? Can you tweak that? Well, it's a lot easier now that I use multi-track, not destructive. So I put them in a multi-track. If I hear the reverb or it needs additional EQ, because the EQ I do in RX, you know, low pass, high pass is something that everyone's probably going to need but then i'm listening to each track individually as we go and they need more tweaking then i'll i have the rx plugins Mm. in audition and i'll run the d reverb and if it's the complicated reverb i i guess complicated reverb huh what I mean is when the somebody's didn't send me separate tracks so they're both on the same one then i'll have to put it in RX-7 and do the dialogue de-reverb. Right. Instead, I actually do that in RX-7 because Audition got really confused when I tried to add that plugin. I don't know why. Maybe it was having a bad day. Oh, so, I see. So, whatever. But I'll de-reverb in there and then work on EQ. Some people need more help than others, as you know. Gwen, um, Hello, what? what were you guys doing here? But I have presets for my regular clients who always had the same setup and always have, Mm. you know, interesting sound, shall we say. So then I will line them up and listen minute by minute and take out all the distractions, which may include clicking into the waveform and doing the auto heal in spectral view. If there's, Someone bumps their mic or footsteps in the hallway or whatever. Random little sounds. Squeaky chairs happens. I took a cat out recently and that was oh. that was the first time. I'm like, oh, there's a cat in the background. Hmm. Hadn't had that before. Wow. <laughs> and I'll do that in the waveform spectral view, usually using the auto heal stuff. And that's an Adobe Audition pl- uh, plug-in? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's control U, and it's magic. Okay. Yeah, auto heal. What does that mean? I don't mean? always think to... What? Auto heal. What does that even mean? It's like attenuate. Is that the right word? In RX, but it just knows. Oh, okay. It's just smart. It just does it. I don't know. <laughs> it works. <laughs> I don't think too hard about it sometimes. I discovered it by accident and went, oh, hey, look, that does what I wanted to do. Sweet. So that's how you took out the cat? I think so. Okay. That's pretty cool. See, I, I don't use Audition, so I, I would love to try ah. all this stuff. Well, it's worth playing with. Dude, you play with all the other ones. What is your main one again? Are you Pro Tools or are you... Uh, no, for my doll, Reaper. I still use Reaper. Okay, Reaper. Okay, that was that was my other thing. I'm like, is he Pro Tools or he Reaper? Okay, you're Reaper. The thing I liked about Reaper when I was using it before at the radio station, we used Reaper some was how quickly it would render files. Oh my gosh, it was so fast. I don't know if it was our computers or if it was Reaper or what, but that was the best part about that was actually finishing things up. Interesting. So fast. Cause I use, uh, it yeah. doesn't render very quickly for me. Cause I, I guess I use a lot of plugins, a lot of processing, but yeah, usually if something yeah, we renders doing that at the radio station, <laughs> right? Usually if something renders quickly, that's sort of like a red flag. Like, whoa, dude, be careful. Like it's, it might not oh. be mixing it together in the best quality if it's re- you know rendering really fast. So. Mm. True, but I didn't know what I was doing totally then because I was still learning mm. and stuff. So. I don't know. I own Reaper. I have lots of DAWs. I just (laughs) typically use Audition because I learned on Cool Edit Pro. (laughs) Well, part of what, well, yeah, you laugh. It's the grandfather (laughs) of Audition. And we had it on CD-ROM at the station. So I used said CD-ROM and put it on my my laptop. But then technology grew up and Cool Edit Pro didn't because now it's, oops, 
audition. So I had to kind of grow up with it. And I took, well, I finished my degree in new media a couple years ago and some of my classes required creative cloud. So I got creative cloud anyway. And then, well, it's a no brainer. If you have creative cloud anyway, why not use audition? Right. So you're in, let's say you're in audition and you're in the multi-track part of audition and that's where you're doing mm -hmm. most of your work, even your editing. So ha, yep. is it really easy to edit like small things? Like, cause what I do when I do my detailed editing, I want to like, sometimes at the beginning of a breath, there'll be like a little mouth click. So mm -hmm. someone will go, or like yeah. they'll breathe in with a little mouth click and I can actually go in and I'll just take out like a zoom in and just take out the little tiny mouth click at the beginning of a breath. Yeah. Can you do things yeah. that granular in the multi-track view? Yes. Yeah. You just keep zooming in. And then, and then but when yeah, you, I, I do the click things all the time. And then when you cut it out, it cuts that section out of all the tracks and moves everything over to the left. It can. If you just want to cut it out of the one, you can do that too. You okay. don't have to ripple delete every time. You can okay. do just just one you can hit. You know, there's different keystrokes, different shortcut keys for what you're doing. But yeah, I do that all the time. Or you can even you know split it, use the razor tool or whatever, and then just slide it over a little bit, depending on how clean of a cut it is. Got it. So ripple delete for everyone listening, if you're not sure what that is, ripple delete means that it'll delete, like let's say you highlight a section that's, let's say one second. Let's say it's one second of silence you want to remove from the entire episode, not just one track. You just, you highlight that one second and you, you, you either click or use a keyboard stroke for ripple delete and it will delete one second from all the tracks and it will move everything to the right of that. It'll move it over one second. So it'll just get rid of that one second like it never existed and, and but keep everything else in time. Yeah. And if you want that one second back for whatever reason, oh, look, it's still there because this is non-destructive. You can just scoot things over and drag right. it back out. And it's still there. It's magic. I love this. <laughs> so what other what other types of edit, like what other examples of editing you do in multitrack? Was that... Did I say that right? Did I, yeah, I was that formal I'm not sure. formal English grammar that I that I asked well, the question? Yeah, but I don't really like I don't know what you mean other than No, I like so understand. let's say you're gonna go through and edit it. Like what are some of the things you do? Okay. That's all. Okay. Well also add in the intros, outros, music, bumpers and stuff and transitions. So one of my shows does a little zoop zoop each time he says something and it's it. it's savings angel Josh Elledge and he it's mostly just him. Sometimes he has interviews that I'll splice in, but he'll just pause in between each of his topics. And then I have to go in and the way it, he usually leaves me a couple seconds for transition because he knows I'm going to put the in there. So then I you know, razor tool it and adjust it, drop in the, I think we call it swipe file and tighten everything up. And then it keeps talking. It's kind of handy. So there's a few of those each show. And then his interviews aren't part of the initial file. They're sent to me separately. So then I have to look at the show notes that they give me to know where in the show said interview goes. And then, you know, use your razor tool, cut up the off and then scoot over, mm. <laughs> scoot over the extra and then drop the interview in there in different tracks and then edit that out and put all the pieces together. So that's kind of fun when I have the different parts to go together and then, you know, intro, outro, fun stuff. And some of them, I save the project file. I have like, hey, for the Sparkle Hour or whatever, here's their template. So every time they're going to have the same intro and outro and transitions. And I really need to start writing things down and making everyone like a folder in Google to tell me <laughs> what they all are in case I forget. Because I'll scroll back there. I'm like, what is, what, how was that that did that? How, oh, okay. When do I put the music on this one? I don't know. I forget. Um, so s some of the shows, I just have a template. Right, right. So how do you, when when you're mixing in the different, like let's say there's an interview with a host and a guest, how do you make sure that they end up being the same volume instead of uh, the, the dreaded amateur move where the host is really loud and the guest is really soft? <laughs> Well, hopefully they're on separate tracks. <laughs> of course, of course. 
<laughs> first of all. <laughs> then they, well, if not, then that, that's a whole different problem if they're if they're on the that, if they're on the same track. Th- then I say mean things at my yeah, and then you gotta editing. you know pull out all the tools like mm-hmm. you know sometimes in that case in those cases really? sometimes I'll just really? run it through a phonic leveler just to say hey will this fix it <laughs> yeah I don't always trust a phonic I know some people swear by it and if it's really a crazy one I'll do it but I don't always like the way it sounds later I'm one of those I'd rather just do it myself but I, I feel exactly old. the same way by the way I only okay. use it in emergencies. Yeah, and sometimes it's an emergency. Like, what? Right. What? What did you just give me? <laughs> but in the in the multi track view, you can adjust the volume of each track independently. Right. And so that's the first thing. And then when you mix it down, I go, "Hmm, does that look right? No, that doesn't look right. Okay, go back. Let's uh, so you <laughs> fix this again." And so you're listening for the level, but you're also looking at the size of the 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 waveform on the screen. And where and the little oh the meter level meter got mm-hmm. it got it got it yeah so looking at the waveform looking at the meter and listening and as I go in the initial edits adjusting the volume in the tracks but then after mixing it down sometimes I didn't get it quite like I wanted it mm. or I thought it was good as I was editing and then I mix it down and go oh no that didn't hmm, you know. But I haven't had too many people that are too, too bad about their levels, but it it happens. So if, after you render it and mix it down and then, then you realize, oh, God, this that the guest is just, a, you know, significantly a little bit too loud. How do you fix it? I go back to multi-track view because I, I don't do anything else. I don't take any other steps after do that. I just do the... Uh, I'll make sure I tell you the right thing. Yeah, mix session to new file. So I mix session to new file. And I'll look at the file. And if it's wrong, I just go back to multi-track view. And then mix down to another file. So then I'll have two mixes until I get it right. What? What? Uh... And then I'll run it all through match loudness in the end anyway. Okay. So wait. So what? F- what? F- do you mix it down to a WAV file or MP3? Wave. So I'm still at wave at the moment. Got it. Got it. Good. Okay. So you mix it down, and right, you get the level. You get the levels right between all the speakers and stuff. And then, tell me about the match. The match volume. That's where you get your luffs, or however you say them, your luffs to make the it loud. Oh, I and, see. Yeah, the, the best example I've heard. You know, when this isn't done, like you're watching TV and you have the volume. For your show at a certain level. And then the car commercial comes on and it's so loud. You know, hey, come down today and buy this special. You know, obviously they didn't do a proper uh, match loudness here. And then you had to, you're like, oh my gosh, you had to turn it down. And then your show comes back on and you can't hear it anymore because it's so oh, quiet. God. So that is why we use uh, the match loudness and get your luffs. And I was surprised recently to hear Bandrew Scott, a person I revere that right that's the right word revere <laughs> i mean i'm not afraid I of him but i, 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 I respect it's like him. i'm not exactly sh- okay, okay okay respect like, yeah no i, I don't respect know if that's him. the right word you haven't finished your sentence yet <laughs> he he's he he said recently in, in one of his shows or one of his videos that he actually mixes down he or he sets the loudness of his final mixes to minus 15 luffs instead of minus 16 and i was like oh really dude you're going to start ruining it for the rest of us. You're going to be like that TV commercial that comes on that Jennifer just demonstrated. <laughs> there is a debate. It's like, are you supposed to be at 16, 15, 14? I don't know. Alexa wants... Oh, now she's going to talk to me. Oh, Crap. geez. Sorry. Um, <laughs> 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 Nothing. Was it talking to you? It's a lie. <laughs> oh, Apparently, uh, her standard is different than Apple's. It's different than right. whatever. So I just play with it and then... But Hopefully I believe for Spotify okay. and A L E X A, I believe it they'll take your file and just make it a little bit louder. So on our end, we really don't. It's not like you have to give okay. them a louder file. That you give you give, we give them the normal one, and then they bump it up two luffs. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah. Which I is, don't know how it all works. Which is better for us because then we <laughs> could just put the show out at one at the 
the agreed upon level, and that's it. All right. Yeah. So you do match volume, and then MP3 resolution. What do you what do you mix it down to? You do some of your clients want uh, mono episodes and some stereo episodes, or do you do everything in mono? If it's up to me, I do it in mono. However, I do have some clients who are like, we want stereo 128. This is what we want. We yeah. want it back to us in MP3 and wave. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. Yeah. But most of the time, I'm mono because why double if it's just one person talking or two people talking? You're just making right. your file size bigger. Who needs that? And then I've been doing 96 instead of 128. Um, because it's not that huge of a difference on a podcast and you makes your file size a little bit smaller. Oh, so 96 with stereo. No, 96 with mono. Oh, 96 mono. Well, the standard for mono is 64, so 96 is even better, yeah. Oh, well, I started when I was new and I hadn't learned that much. I was doing 128 and then learned mono, Dave right. Jackson did a show comparing the difference. Yeah, mono. And went, oh, why am I doing 128? Right. Hmm. So I've gone down to 96 because, like, oh, 64. I don't know. <laughs> we should try to we should try to start a 320 revolution. Come on, people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe not. Goodness. Goodness. I always wanted to for the hardcore listeners of this show. I always wanted to somehow. I don't. I don't even know how I would do it. Offer. The wave file download, twenty four bit, forty eight k. Just holy cow! Right? Wouldn't that be cool? Like it why? literally why? over a gig. It, <laughs> like, why would you do that? No, you're right. Well, so. I had uh, some clients. I've they'd been recording in studio together. Uh, it's a host and co-host every show, and they're like, "Oh, we're gonna have to do remote stuff." So okay, well, use Squadcast because it's in wave and it's great. And they send it to like, holy cow, these files are so much bigger than this MP3s. I'm like, I know, but that's what I want you to send to me. So it's all good. Yeah. We're good. Don't worry about it. You put it in a Dropbox. It's fine. One thing I wanted to ask you about that we haven't talked about yet is your monitoring. Do you have monitor speakers or do you do everything on headphones? I do most of it on headphones. If I'm, well, no, I go back and forth. Depends on if anyone else is home. If oh. other people are home then I use my headphones. If nobody else is home, I have little speakers. And I called, I referred to them as monitors once. And my husband got so confused. He's like, but you have two monitors. Because he was thinking about the oh, screens. Oh, geez. I'm like, what? No, no, wait. You think of them as speakers. It's like, hey, did you pick up those monitors for me? He's like, you you already had monitors. <laughs> like, oh, no, 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 no. I mean the little speakers. Yeah. And they're nothing fancy. I, I'd like to have bigger, better ones, but my work area is kind of tiny at the moment. Mm -hmm. I need more space, but haven't gotten to that yet. So if, if I'm by myself and no one else is here, the, a lot of times I'll just use the speakers. Unless I hear something through the speakers and go, wait, what was that? And then I got to put the headphones on, like, you know, push them against my ears really tightly. It's like, oh, make sure I hear that. And how loud do you monitor? As loud as I feel like I need to. <laughs> <laughs> as loud as possible. Put it on 10, baby. <laughs> I mean, I, just, I, it, I don't know. I, if I think it's too loud, I'll move it. You know, I'll change it. It doesn't really <laughs> stay the same. Well, yeah. I mean, the loudness matters because, uh, you know, you yeah. got the, the Fletcher Munson curve and, and now... And now mm -hmm. Now Ralph M. Rivera has to take a shot of something because I mentioned the <laughs> Fletcher <laughs> Munson curve. And uh, oh, by the way, here's a picture of Ralph M. Rivera. And by the way, if you haven't listened to, he, he started up, him and his wife, Carolyn, started up their web search social podcast. So they did a first episode, maybe a week ago or something. And I'm, they maybe do like two a month. But anyway, so Ralph M. Rivera back into podcasting. Oh, here's a picture of Ralph on my screen. Hey, Barry. Barry, come here. Look at this picture of Ralph. What do you, uh, what do you, <laughs> what's your reaction when you look at this picture of Ralph? Something from out of ancient times. Big mouth. <laughs> lot of teeth. <laughs> oh, wow. all right. Well, thank you, Barry. Thanks, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Ralph. All right. Well, Jennifer, 
This has been awesome. Uh, what else did we not talk about? I mean, there's, I'm sure oh, there's a million. I just things. wanted to like. Well, there's lots of things. I wanted to to brag on a project I did recently, and it wasn't a podcast thing. Our marching band, Lafayette Band, uh, state champions, a Kentucky high school marching band, at our state finals performance. Second movement starts, and a metronome starts Ooh. clicking. Tink, 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 ching, tink, 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 ching. All of us parents in the stands are like, holy crap, what is happening? Oh. And it obviously wasn't our beat, because you could watch the drum majors and hear the sound, and they did not match. Mm. And I'm thinking, I can fix this. <laughs> you know, Sitting there in the stands, we're freaking out. What's going on? I'm like, I can fix this. Mm. I can fix this. And it turned out there was some other metronome happening, maybe another band warming up in the area and their signal was interfering with our Bluetooth mic. But the judges figured it out that it wasn't our fault. So it didn't count against us. Our band stayed on track, didn't phase us. So probably bonus points for that. But as soon as the DVD got to my house of the recording, I was like, I can fix this. Because it was so predictable. Ding, 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 ching, ding, 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 ching. So I stick it into RX and just look at it. I'm like, okay, figure it out exactly you know, where it is each time. And I took that bad boy out. And then I increased the flute solo because it was just too quiet because she had to get off her mic. This is this and that and that. Mm-hmm. So I'm playing with it and working on it. And when other parents were picking up their DVDs, that was one of the first questions they asked, like, did they take out the metronome? It's like, no, they didn't take out the metronome, but I'm going to because it <laughs> can't be that complicated. And it was time consuming. And I asked for advice in one of the RX6 boards on Facebook. I'm like, hey, here's what I'm trying to do. What are the best tools? And basically got confirmation for what I'd already planned to do, right? Mm. And fix it up and put it back together. And it's so awesome now. I, you don't realize how annoying the metronome really was after you've worked on it and taken it out and don't hear it anymore. And then go back and listen to the rituals. It's like, holy cow. Uh. Point being. This is now on my website for my before and after, but my website is, it's kind of lame. <laughs> so you don't, you know, podcast with Jennifer.com, but it's kind of lame, but you can see what I'm talking about. And I was just so stinking proud of that. Thanks, RX. You know, <laughs> I, I, if I wasn't a podcast editor and stuff, I would have no idea how to do that. So that's it kind of cool. comes in handy. And now I look like a hero to the band. So. Yeah, no, that's great. That's a great story. I, and you have the before and after up on your website, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's on the homepage. My, well, oh, yeah. I wanted to brag about it because I was so stinking proud that I did it. You know, I was always like, I know I can. I'm sitting here in the stands while it's happening and everyone's freaking out, but going, I can fix this. I know I can. That's I know cool. I can. That's yeah. the first thing I, I'm going to fix it. I'm looking at your website right now. Podcast with jennifer.com and there's a picture of the mark there's a video i'm not gonna click play but all right so i'll link to this yeah. in the show notes so if you're listening go check out the video and uh that's so cool and and you know what, what i also thought the fact that you were there live probably helped mm-hmm. you do the post-production right in some some way right i think well and that i had heard the show so many times throughout the season you know, I've been at every contest, every football game, well, you know, not every practice, but some of the practice. So I knew mm. how it was supposed to go. That uh. had to help. So I'm like, oh, no, the flute solo. Where did it go? I know it does this part. And then the crowd starts cheering at this one point and just forget trying to find a flute solo when there's crowd cheering, even in RX. I'm like, I oh. lost it because it was like on those same, the flutes on the same frequency as someone in the crowd going, woo! <laughs> okay, mm. that's where the flute goes, but you're screaming, so there's no flute. Awesome. <laughs> but it was really a fun project, you know, just going, I think I can, I think I can. Oh, I got the metronome out. Let's see if I can make the flute solo louder. Woohoo! You know, so it was a, it was a fun little thing. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, listen, I, I, you know, if you listen to it later and go, wow, that was really bad, you know, it's like, you might take that off your website. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. It reminds me of uh, at Podcast Movement in Philly, uh, it was last year, right? Or earlier? Well, no, it's last year now. Uh, me and Steve Stewart and a few others were walking down the street. And there was a the guy's jackhammering, literally jackhammering in the road. Oh, no. And I 
busted out my phone and I'm like, just pretended like I was going to record some audio and be like, hey, we're here at Podcast Movement. Here's Steve Stewart. <laughs> and it was like, <laughs> like it was the loudest thing. And so what we did was we brought it home and Steve, we, well, Steve Stewart and I, you know, separately, we, we ran it, we tried to run it through RX, but that was like, I mean, obviously, I mean, the jackhammer was way louder than anything. Like our voices were in the mm-hmm. background. So like, it, it, like taking out the jackhammer was not even a possibility, but it was funny to see it and it was funny to try. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That was pretty that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, you're like, hey, we got this new shiny RX-7 Advance. Let's see what it's got. You know, take it for your test drive. What do we really got? Cool. So you're the host of The Thoughtful Entrepreneur. What's the website yes. for that? Upmyinfluence.com slash podcast. Okay. Oh, I am there. Good. That is the link. So I just, because I just found it and uh, I'm like, is that really the link? Because, you know, but just That's to make sure. That's the easy one to say. Yeah. And and what is, I have to ask you, what is Bourbon Barrel Podcasting? Is that the name of your company? <laughs> yes. I just formed an LLC at the end of 2018, taking this more seriously. Last year, 2018 was like a building year, figure out what I'm doing, throwing a lot of money into equipment and upgrades and mm stuff going okay am I really taking this seriously yes it was the first year I hadn't gotten a w2 or the like in a while like okay let's see what we're gonna do and now if I'm really gonna get serious let's name the company and so I'm bourbon barrel podcasting LLC because I'm from Kentucky and I went to podcast movement in Philly and I'm wearing a blue shirt with the state of Kentucky on it that says home and people are asking me where I'm from. <laughs> I excuse, and I just kind of look down on my shirt. Yeah, and, and they're like, "Well, where is that?" I'm like, what do you mean? Where is that? Like, is that a cloud? <laughs> no, it's the state of Kentucky. So this <laughs> bothered me that people didn't know. So on the little promo video, my pinned tweet on Twitter, I'm at ky podcasting on Twitter. They had little video outtakes that were going on. And there, there's part of it with me pointing at my shirt, talking to people, because it became a joke because nobody knew what the state of Kentucky looked like. Okay. It was very, very sad to me. And people like, hey, hey, friend, do you know what state that is? And they're like, uh, West Virginia. I'm like, dude, it doesn't look anything like West Virginia. So it, it was kind of disappointing. <laughs> and I wanted to represent, you know, that I'm a Kentucky girl in my branding and it went back and forth. And around here, everything is bluegrass or everything is wildcat. But bourbon, that's a thing. Mm. It, if you want to drink bourbon, you got to come here. We got the bourbon trail. We got lots of, lots of, lots of bourbon. <laughs> so right. that was the Kentucky coming through. Okay, I could work with this. Hey, my buddy Rob Rogers, who has previous guests on the show, he's from Lexington. Really? Yeah, Rob Rogers, from- MD. He's a doctor and he's all doing medical education and he's also a podcast evangelist as it says on his on his twitter but yeah he does a uh, medjitopia does he, he still live here yeah you yeah say rob from, rogers so I didn't you know if it was like... look him up yeah he needs to come to our meetups oh well maybe he, yeah. yeah well i was gonna say maybe he does but then i was like well you would know it if he did no <laughs> no we're <laughs> we've only been doing it for a few months and it's still kind of trying to get the word out there so, all right yeah thanks. Well, there you so, go reach out to him it's a lonely world in podcast editing at times. It's like, is anyone out there? <laughs> yeah, no, that's how I feel. I, w- I wish I could. I wish we had a good local meetup group here in Colorado Springs, but we tried. We tried for years, different people, you know, organizing it, and it just never got the turnout. And hmm. there's a bunch of people here in Colorado Springs who do podcasts, but they would never show up. So it's like after a while, we sad. just gave up after the third. You know how like on Meetup, like one person will start the Meetup and then if it doesn't go well, they'll literally give it up and like one of the members can take it over. It was uh-huh. taken over twice. So that means three separate wow. people tried to organize this thing and it never worked for any of them because for some reason there just wasn't the turnout. So it's not easy. Well, we've organized via Eventbrite and with Facebook group and not done the actual Meetup, okay. meetup thing because it looked like someone had tried that and it didn't go anywhere and I was like well I don't want to pay the money to start a meetup if we can just get the word out and start meeting and I'm the right brain of the 
meetup and Michael is the left brain. So he's more into scheduling and figuring out how to get people there. And then oh, I'm okay. one who talks and gets people to engage and make it a networking and a beneficial event. So it's, it takes both of us <laughs> and our That's different cool. gifts to actually get it going. Anyway, it's not a huge group yet, but we're getting there. Cool. Well, we're out of time. Jennifer Longworth, podcast with Jennifer.com. The Thoughtful Entrepreneur. The links will be in the description. Jennifer, thanks for coming and hanging out with me. Well, thank you, Chris. Thank you, Barry. It's been a pleasure. And you know what you have to do at the very end. You have to yell, sound great when I tell you. And that that goes for all you listening, too. I want to hear everyone in their cars and in their homes or jogging on a trail with earbuds. You need to yell, sound great. All right? Right here. Go. Sound great. Great. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah! You walk away from me well, and you can't blame that pot so well.